जय हिंद एवरी वन आई नीरज शर्मा असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर ई सी डिपार्टमेंट एट अजय कुमार गर्ग इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज गाजियाबाद आई एम हियर टू प्रेजेंट अ लेक्चर फर्स्ट फॉर द सब्जेक्ट माइक्रोवेव एंड रडार इंजीनियरिंग दैट हैज बीन इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन द अवर लास्ट अकेडमिक सेशन इन फ्रॉम सेशन टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन डेज ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू सो दिस इज एन के ई सी so here the updated syllabus has been introduced in this subject and with the inclusion of this uh, topic uh, or the or the subject radar engineering with microwave but uh, before itself only microwave is only running only in the six semester students are studying but right now this is the combination of these two microwave and radar engineering so in this subject uh, first topic that i want to discuss with you with all of you that is the transmission line so the transmission line uh, that is a very important uh, topic or uh, important uh, device or important material in our electronics uh, communication engineering uh, stream not only uh, it is also it uh, it has the most important in the uses okay so just like uh, just before moving ahead into the detail or technicality of this subject this topic before uh, i want to say express uh, view something on that what is it basically the transmission line that is an a uh, device that is used for the communication point of view in wire medium okay that means we are just like take an example of our uh, communicate uh, our tv setup that we are using all in our homes so where what we are doing we are connecting an antenna which is mounted on the roof of our home and the device setup which is uh, in, uh, situated in our rooms so connectivity between these two uh, antenna and the setup that is can be possible with a wire medium and the wire medium which we are using that is the transmission line it's an a broad name but it have the further classification that i will discuss you uh, separately in the next slides so this is the transmission line so that the transmission line is nothing but a medium that can be used to carry the rf signal from transmitter to the receiver so this is the transmission line so when an rf rf means what that is radio frequency or microwave signal is transmitted through the conventional transmission line consisting of two open wires of length and conductor separation larger than lambda and energy is lost due to em radiation from the lines okay <coughs> so this is the uh, transmission line that means what is here here the two open wire let's say one is this and this one is second one so these two wires are now we are using okay these are two open sorry open wires so these two wires like this one one wire and this one second wire and the separation between two uh, between these two will be the greater than or equal to the lambda okay so we are keeping so this is the combination of an a transmission line okay so this is this can be used for the uh, em Uh, transmission or rf or the microwave signal from transmitter to the receiver that we are using okay now this radiation loss which is occurred in this so it can be reduced or eliminated by transmission line of rf over microwave through some guiding structure that means if we are keeping these two an open environment so there will be losses because they are contacting with the environment also itself so due, due to the some conditions weather condition it may be affected so in that case we are providing a guiding structure in this so that means we are covering it with some uh, dielectric materials itself so that's why dielectric material or some coating material so that's why it can be protected from the uh, losses okay so this is the general introduction regarding the transmission line so what are the types of the transmission line next this will be the now my next topic in this uh, Contain that is the types of the transmission 
line. So here you can see that is the general structure I have shown here in this one. So where only two lines, one line and second one line. Okay, so this is simple general structure. Now after that, most probably and uh, because this structure mostly used in the old age when the transmission uh, right now we are um, uh, transmission is possible with the satellite communication but right now in the old days when the transmitter only one and the number of distributors are from with the help of the dd national the transmitter the signal is re, uh, transmitting to the distant area or the rural areas okay at that time for the reception of these signal uh, Yagiura antenna is has been used at the had been used at that time. Right now, some some other countries also right now it is using, but mostly in India, Yagiura antenna was used at that time. So we are using at a this type of uh, sing, uh, transmission line where the two parallel wires are connected and separated by some plastic coating. Okay, so that can be used as general structure. Now, right now the scenario has been changed in the recent trend when we are using the setup box. Uh, for the TV transmission from this TV, so that we are using the connection between the antenna and the uh, to the our uh, TV setup, we are using the uh, coaxial cable. So coaxial cable is nothing but also in a type of a transmission line. When where what it is it contain it will contain the inner conductor which is uh, enclosed with the dielectric material and uh, on the dielectric material the outer conductor will be the, uh, we are imposing on that and after that this conductor this uh, conductor of these two inner conductor and outer conductor are uh, shielded with a uh, coating so in that way coaxial cable are now formed so the two conductors are used for to incoming at the outgoing current that are now using the right now in our communication channel and also we are in the labs uh, we are also connecting the CRO uh, with some electronic equipment with the help of this coaxial cable so right now uh, coaxial cable is have a more important or the important role right now and uh, next one that is a strip line this is another one topic uh, another one type of this uh, transmission line that is the strip line in this what we are doing that is to just uh, reduce the size of uh, antennas or to draw it onto the PCB, we are uh, creating this strip line. So where this is another theory that can be used, uh, which can be uh, imposed or we can create it onto the strip uh, PCB or some specific dielectric material that we are using. Okay, So this is the strip line and this is the general uh, structure that you can see here one wire and this one is second wire one for incoming second for outgoing so the current loop completely closed so the current can will be closed that means the signal transmission can be possible and this will be the radiation the signal can be moved uh, field can be generate from plus to negative like this one okay so this is the radiation from the uh, this picture will show the radiation from the uh, transmission line okay so this is the regarding the types of the transmission line next one now in the detail analysis now that will be the general introduction i have given to you but the technicality uh, uh, it required the its explanation what is the value of this voltage and current for uh, the transmission line what voltage is coming out and what will be the value of current so just to elaborate this one what we are doing uh, we are working with the equivalent circuit that means the past one that I have seen, you have seen this this wire, this wire, coaxial cable will also have the this one wire, this one wire also. Okay, so these two wires having. So just to elaborate, it's a voltage or current, voltage or current. If we want to calculate, so what will be the procedure with us? So for that point of view, we are using the equivalent model or equivalent circuit of any electronic model that means equivalent model means the electronic component is now converted into the resistance inductance and the electric uh, con conduct uh, resistance uh, inductors and conductor capacitance okay so these three are the parameter which can be used for the equivalent model that is the first one just i am writing here resistance or register inductor 
एंड दिस वन और रजिस्टर सो दीज थ्री आर द बेसिक इलेक्ट्रिकल कंपोनेंट विद द हेल्प ऑफ दीज टू थ्री कंपोनेंट वी कैन ड्रॉ द इक्वेलेंट सर्किट ऑफ दिस ट्रांसमिशन लाइन और एनी अदर वन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक सर्किट but here our interest into the transmission line its analysis so we are just using the equivalent circuit so in this equivalent circuit we are creating the its a equivalent diagram okay so the in equivalent diagram we are when we are drawing so as you can see that the transmission we are uh, stating here or we are looking here only the one section of uh, it's an a uh, collection of the number of uh, sections in this so we are just selecting only the one part so in this what is happening here we have the connected the in uh, voltage v of z comma t first one v of z comma t means because we are uh, transmitting the em signal uh, electromagnetic signal or the rf signal rf signal that can have the three dimensional view so in that respect we are and X Y Z coordinate system means rectangular coordinate system we are using. So in this, what we will consider just first to transmit the signal from uh, in the me sorry in uh, the transmission of signal can be possible from in the positive Z direction we are considering. So we are this Z will show the direction where the signal is going on, and P will explain the regarding the or give the idea regarding the. Uh, time variation of that signal okay so here the signal will consist of time variation along with the direction okay so this is the v of z comma t so applying voltage and the current i z comma t and this will be the equivalent circuit here resistance okay and uh, inductance are connected in series combination r, r and l this one and this one is in series combination okay and del z is a small fractional changes we are considering here and uh, on the second node the we are connecting the inductance or trans sorry transconductance as well as the capacitance this is transconductance g and this will be the trans uh, capacitance c because two wires uh, uh, in the single wire resistance and the along the path we have the inductance okay in series and the two wire will be there one is this and second one is this so gap will be uh, the two plate will be clear, created here so this will form the capacitance structure so r will be just because of the ohmic ohmic losses introduced here l just because of the magnetic energy storage c just because of the capacitive energy uh, uh, sorry electrical energy storage and g just because introduced here in this due to the dielectric losses of the material so this will be the possibility and uh, this will be the structures and from here that point Uh, after that node we are using the current coming out that is the i z plus del z t because this z2 because this position we are considering z plus del z means del z distance it has been traveled by the signal and so current will be i z plus del z comma t and the voltage is v z plus del z comma t so that means this is a generator section means from the signal is generating and this will be providing to the load means where it is going to connect at the load end okay so now our interest in this analysis we are interested in to calculate the value of vz comma t i z comma t so what will be the value of these two parameter so we are focusing on this so what will be the procedure to calculate the values of this vz comma t and i z comma t means voltage and current okay so in this uh, process to get the values of these two uh, para electrical parameters so we are using the our conventional method kcl and the kvl we are using that we have studied in network theory or as well as in other subject also so we what we are doing we are applying the kvl and the kcl on this above circuit okay the which is showing in the above figure so in this what we are doing we are just creating a kvl kirchhoff voltage law and kcl that is the kirchhoff current law so with that help when we are creating a closed loop we are considering plus vz comma t okay this one part minus plus minus you will consider we can consider here like in this way and minus of r del z into iz comma t 
drop along this resistance and drop along this inductance part that is the uh, minus l del z del i z comma t over del t and the output voltage because of this loop we are considering here right now close loop so from here to we start and the coming back to the this port this one here so the loop will be closed and the voltage uh, another voltage will be minus of v z plus del z comma t so in this way we are creating this equation we have generating this this equation with the help of kvl and next one that we have applied the kcl okay so kcl kirchhoff current law we are applying applying onto this node we are applying onto this node so at this node what will be here these two currents one from we are considering uh, from this direction one current okay let's say it will be i1 one is from this side i2 and it is all i2 is further divided let's say i3 and i4 and one of this i5 so in this way we are using the uh, this one is just a minute this one current we are considering that is i5 let's say so in this way we can uh, apply the kirchhoff uh, current law okay so in kirchhoff current law the summation of all uh, currents at any node coming equal to zero or incoming current equal to the outgoing current so in this way we are current is coming in that branch that is iz comma t then the drop uh, current drop in this g del z uh, v in v deals g into del z v z plus del z comma t drop ic is equal to c dv by dt that is a current inside an a conductor or capacitor so that is c del z this is a, a dv del v z plus del g comma t by del t because this voltage is appear along this capacitor pa, capacitor part and this transconductance part okay and the outgoing current which is coming out from that node that is the i z plus del z comma t so the, by in this way in this way we are getting the two equation equation number 1 and 2 okay so now we are simplifying these two equation so we have arranged these two equation in this way so vz plus del z comma t minus vz comma t we are arranging equation 1 or it it will equal to minus r del z i in z comma t minus l del z del i z comma t by del t similarly the equation 2 uh, here we are arranging the previous means equation number 1 and 2 so by arranging one equation first we are getting this equation after arranging on the arrangement of second equation we are getting this one equation okay that will be comes out iz plus del z comma t minus iz comma t minus of g del z v z plus del z comma t minus c del z del v z plus del g comma t by del t so let's say consider the equation number 3 and equation number 4 we are considering here now after that uh, we are just simplifying these two equations so for that we are dividing both the equation by the factor this del z the small uh, very small change we are considering here and the taking the limit del z tends to so zero so by considering these two condition means dividing that by del z and del z tends to zero we are uh, simplifying that equation so just first we are considering this one fifth third number equation we are considering so it will be now looks like this one in this format in this way okay limit del z del z tends to zero and on simplification this will equal to del uh, the simplification of these two condition del z and del z tends to zero it will become del v z comma t by del z is equal to minus of r i z comma t minus l del i z comma t by del t same way in the similar way when we are uh, arrange this equation so this will equation 4 uh, will now becomes del i z comma t by del z is equal to minus g v z comma t minus c del v z comma t by del t so let's say these are the two equation equation number 5 as well as equation number 6 so these two equations are known as the telegrapher's equation okay so this is the telegrapher's equation for the transmission line now we have to uh, what we want to do we want the 
transmission for the for the propagation of the em signal through the transmission line so we are interested into the double derivative of the or the second order differential of the these equations we have to calculate so we will now further proceed in this way for the to calculate uh, to calculate the uh, second order differential to, or to find out the second order differential equation so uh, in this way just uh, voltage and current are the function of both z and t i have already explained to you and now the instantaneous line voltage and current can be exp uh, explained in the frame form of phasor it will be now looks like vz comma t is equal to real part of vz e raised to power j omega t similarly iz comma t equal to real part of iz e raised to power j omega t so here this vz and iz are comes in the form of phasor that means along the what will be the phase change so along this phase with the help of this phase it can be move further in the positive z direction so uh, like the previous equation so we are arranging the equation what we have seen in this these two equation number 5 and equation number 6 arranging so it will now looks like dv z by dz is equal to minus of r plus j omega l into iz uh, means we are converting the equation number 5 uh, and 6 into the phasor form this will be arranged in the phasor form so it will be looks like dv z by dz is equal to minus of r plus j omega l uh, iz and diz over dz is equal to minus of g plus j omega c into vz so i think uh, we have given the number 6 so let's say it will be equation number Seven and this one now equation number eight we are considering. So again now we are simplifying that. So this is simply the form equations that we have previously uh, written. We are again mentioning here. So uh, decoupling these two or we are one to the second order differential. So we have to done the uh, do the second. Uh, we have to find out the second order differential of these equation number seven and eight. So in this way when we are calculating the second order differential of uh, these two equation so when we are using the second order differential dvz so it will with respect to the z means we our wave is traveling into the z direction so the differential we have to take along the z axis so sorry in the z direction so d square vz by dz square means what we are doing the d by dz of this part so it will become d square vz by dz square is equal to minus of r plus j omega l into d by dz of this iz and from i uh, d iz so this value will be become d of i z by dz and its value from the equation number 8 uh, uh, that means this one equation you have to put there it is equal to minus of g plus j omega c vz so we have put this value into this equation so we are d square vz by dz square become this one uh, minus of r plus j omega l into minus of g plus j omega c into vz okay so uh, now after arrangement we are arranging so this d square vz by dz square will uh, equal to minus of gamma square vz so and arranging this equation takes to the left hand side so this equation is will become d square vz by dz square minus of gamma square vz equal to zero so in this year we are considering this part equal to gamma square because our we are entered, uh, interested into the propagation of wave so the propagation constant we have to include and the propagation of wave will affected with the help of r l g and c as well all the parameters so we are considering this complete factor r plus j omega l into g plus j omega c equal to let's say we consider it gamma square so its value i have written here gamma is equal to under root of r plus j omega l into g plus j omega c so this is the propagation constant with that propagation gamma the wave will move forward to the forward to the z direction gamma is also having the two components itself gamma will have two component that is alpha and j beta that means gamma is equal to alpha plus j beta okay just a minute
alpha plus j beta. Here this alpha is attenuation constant. And this beta is known as the phase constant. So, to move the wave in further positive z direction, uh, either in transmission line or in waveguide, it's any anywhere. So, the wave should have the phase constant. So, when the phase will, phase will change, because if if uh, alpha will exist there, that means the signal attenuate. And to wave, move the wave in the forward direction, it is required to have the phase change correspondingly uh, or the along with the time. With the time when the phase will change, then the wave will move forward. Okay. So, this will be the propagation constant we will consider alpha have the value of alpha plus j beta. And for the transmission line case, a gamma uh, means alpha plus j beta is equal to the under root of r plus j omega l into g plus j omega c. So, now we are uh, arranging the wave equations for this transmission line analysis, we have find out these two equations del square vz by del z square is equal to minus of gamma square vz, this one. So, that is also right in here, this one equation. Okay. And uh, next one to uh, for the second equation, means the solution for the this one dz in the same way we when we follow the procedure same procedure again differentiate it uh, with respect to z and solve. So, the solution will comes out d square i of z by dz square minus gamma square i z equal to 0. So, these two equations are the comes out after calculate applying the KCL and KVL on to the transmission line. Okay. So, with the propagation constant gamma, so its value again written here. So, now, we have the solution of these two equations means uh, I think we have allotted, uh, allotted 7 and 8. So, let us say this one is equation number 9 and this one is equation number 10. Okay. So, these two equations are now we have written here. So, we will interested into the solution of these two because these two equations 9 and 10 are the uh, second order differential equation. So, with the help of mathematics solution, we can solve these equa equations. So, the solution of these two equations, 9 equation will comes out V of z is equal to V naught plus e raise to power minus gamma z and plus V naught minus e raise to power gamma z. So, let us say equation number 11 and for the solution of this one, d square i z by d z square minus gamma square i z equal to 0, the solution of this equation i z is equal to i naught in plus e raise to power minus gamma z plus i naught minus e raise to power gamma z. Here, the wave is propagating with the propagation constant gamma with the direction in means it is the propagating in the z direction. So, here gamma e raise to power minus gamma z and e raise to power plus gamma z represent the wave propagation in positive z and minus z direction respectively. So, for that point of view, we are just uh, uh, some uh, someone is in a confusion that how can this solution will be comes out. So, from the mathematics solution, we can we are solving these two equations. So, in which we have to calculate the value of complementary function and the particular integral. So, you, by the help of the complementary function, we can calculate because uh, if we consider this one, let us say. So, I have to change this equation like m square minus gamma square into v z equal to 0. So, we have to m square minus gamma square should be 0, m is equal to plus minus of gamma. So, this is a real part and its solution will be e raise to power complementary function will comes out e raise to power uh, minus gamma and plus uh, c 2 into e raise to power uh, plus gamma. So, in this way we are writing here uh, v naught plus e raise to power minus gamma z plus v naught minus e raise to power gamma z. This is the plus uh, positive uh, forward direction. This is and v naught minus for the reverse direction. Okay. So this will be the solution for these the transmission line equation, and this is our technical part that we have covered here. So this will be the derivation for the transmission line equation. Now again, uh, we have to consider some specific condition. If the we have to consider the line should be lossless, means there should be no any losses inside the transmission line. So, we have to for that condition for a transmission line will become lossless. The condition should be r 
resistance and the transconductance part should be zero. Okay, when these two are we know there, so not in available in the trans equivalent circuit, that means there will be no loss will be there. So in this way, we have the if R is equal to and G will be zero, then what will happen? The propagation constant will will uh, propagation constant value will be changed. Means gamma. In the previous equation, we have studied under root of R plus J omega L into G plus J omega C. So by putting the values of R and G zero, gamma will become J omega under root of L C. So when we will compare it alpha plus j beta, so in this way alpha should be zero and beta will be omega under root of L C. Means in the lossless transmission there should be no attenuation because no losses, so no attenuation only wave will propagate. Uh, okay, now we can also define the characteristic impedance, wavelength, and the phase velocity for that lossless transmission line. So trans, uh, this one characteristic impedance is given by Z naught. Under it, it, its value for lossless transmission line is under root L by C and uh, lambda wavelength is given by 2 pi by beta. Okay, and the phase velocity means along with the phase will change. So that is Vp is given by omega by beta, and so B omega by beta will comes out pi by under root of L C. Okay, so this will be the lossless transmission line, and the solution uh, general solution voltage and current. On a lossless transmission line can be written as V Z is equal to V naught plus e raised to power minus of J beta Z because uh, in the previous equations, if you see, we are using here gamma. But for lossless gamma will not exist. Only beta will consider because alpha zero, so it will become V naught plus e raised to power minus J beta Z uh, plus V naught minus e raised to power J beta Z. And I Z in terms of voltage we can also write V naught plus by Z naught into e raised to power minus J beta Z. Minus of V naught minus by Z naught e raised to power plus J beta Z, where this Z naught is the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. Okay, so these two equation solution for the lossless transmission line. Okay, now after that we are considering only we are considering the uh, open source right now. If I have connected this transmission line, let's say the example of our uh, setup uh, tv setup that my wire coming from the roof to the our system or the tv setup so that means we are connecting that line from source to some load okay from generator to load we are means we are connecting this transmission line open ended terminated by some zl load we are having some load where we want to connect it so this will condition known as the terminated lossless transmission line so that means in that case the load will be shifted here and the, all the input out uh, coming input will be observed or the adopt um, observe into this uh, delivered to this load okay not observed delivered to the load so in that case the transmission line have the voltage vz and i comma z characteristic impedance z not phase constant beta and we are terminating this transmission line with this section that is the load section and which load impedance that is denoted by ZL current uh, through this uh, uh, load that is IL and voltage should be VL. Okay. And the, we have connected that line at the from diff, uh, this load is connected at the distance of uh, Z is equal to L from the generator. Okay. So in this way, uh, the our Vz will become V naught plus e raised to power minus of J beta Z plus V V naught minus e raised to power J beta Z and this will be the value of current V naught plus e raised to power minus J beta Z minus V naught minus by Z naught e raised to power of J beta Z. So these these will be the simple solution and we are considering assumption that voltage source at Z less than zero generate an incident waveform. V naught plus e raised to power minus z and V naught minus will be considered here as a reflected wave in this because reflection should be there or not after connecting the term impedance at the load. So, when we have to do some analysis like uh, the analysis which you are looking here right now, uh, it will also give some uh, 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 an, a very important parameter because when we are connecting an, a transmission line to the load. So, after connecting the means two medium we are connected one this wire and one this medium let us say okay uh, sorry uh, uh, load. 
so we what we want connection should be in a manner that no loss should be occurred means no reflection will take place at the joint where these two are we are connecting so if there is any loss or reflection so we have to calculate the value of the reflection coefficient in that case so let's say at the condition if we are connecting at z is equal to 0 in the previous equation these two equations if i am considering so at z is equal to 0 v not so z will become 0 zl will become zl should be simply the ratio of voltage to the current uh, so in that v not by i not so put the values in these two equation this one z is equal to 0 also this one z is equal to 0 when we put so the solution will become z will become v not plus plus v not minus by v not plus minus v not minus into z not and we are arranging this equation in terms of v not minus and the v not plus means the reflected voltage to the incident voltage incident voltage what we are applying v not plus reflected voltage if there is any mess, mismatch then some wave, wave will be reflected back so we are reflected wave voltage will be represented by this v not minus so if the ratio of this reflected voltage to the incident voltage will give the value of reflection and this reflection will be measured with the help of parameter reflection coefficient so we are defining here the reflection voltage reflection coefficient it is denoted by this signal symbol gamma and gamma is given by v naught minus over v naught plus means the reflected voltage to the incident voltage okay its value will be equal to zl minus z naught over zl zl plus z naught okay so this will be the reflection coefficient and on the basis of reflection coefficient we can also define the v s w r that is the voltage standing wave ratio its value is equal to 1 plus mod rho by 1 minus mod rho okay so this is value equal to 1 plus mod rho by 1 minus mod rho so this is another parameter so after that we have to calculate the if uh, at some distance z is equal to minus l means l is equal z equal to l length we are connecting any load so in that case we have to define the input impedance so that means the condition will be now like this a transmission line we are connecting a load here zl so from here we can look for the zn means it have z naught or beta itself characteristic impedance will be there and the phase constant but we have to calculate the value of this zn means is it is known as the input impedance of the transmission line so for that point of view same procedure we will follow so zn is equal to ratio of uh, v of not v of minus l to the i of minus l v of because we are connecting connecting the load connected the load at the z is equal to minus l point so the equation will become v not plus e raised to power j beta l uh, reflection gamma into e raised to power minus g j beta l divided by v not plus e raised to power j beta l minus gamma e raised to power minus j beta l into z not okay so now put the value of this reflection coefficient this value we can put its value is what zl minus z naught over zl plus z naught so we can put this value in this equation and now uh, after putting this value we can simplify that equation and it will come to e raised to power j beta l plus e raised to minus j beta l and another factor coming e raised to power j beta l minus e raised to power minus j beta l so we can converting these two additional subtraction of exponential term it will uh, resulted into the sine or the cosine so the output of this finally j and z in will comes out by given by this equation z in sorry this will be you can consider z n so z n is equal to z naught into z l plus j j z naught 10 beta l divided by z naught plus j into z l 10 beta l so this equation is known as the transmission line impedance equation so this is also another uh, important topic for our transmission line topic so that i have discussed so on the basis of this equation let's say i have a known annotated as an uh, equation number a so when i get the solution of the some or study some special cases for this equation so you can now uh, 
uh, I have written here some special cases for this uh, transmission line. So, that means we are that is dependent upon the input impedance Zn is equal to Z0 Zl plus G Z0. tan beta l plus z naught plus j z l tan beta l. So, in this equation, so first case we are considering that the short circuit case means we are connecting this load as in a short circuit for the transmission line. So, in that case when we are connecting the short circuit case means z l will be 0 when now put the value of ZL is equal to 0 in this equation, the input impedance will become Zn equal to J into Z naught 10 beta L. And if we are connecting open circuited case, that means transmission line is now connected with open circuit impedance. Okay. So, in that case, Z will be ZL equal to infinite. Okay. And in that case, put the value of infinite into the above equation. Z in. So, the Z in will become minus of J into Z naught cot beta L. Okay. And these are the two cases, few cases we can also consider like if we can consider the length of transmission line L is equal to lambda by 2. This is a standard section that we are using the standard length L is equal to lambda by 2 because here we are connecting, uh, we are considering all the length in terms of lambda. So, when we are using L is equal to lambda by 2, so put this value in the above equation Zn, uh, this one. So, Zn will become Zn. So, in that case input impedance will be when the length is equal to, uh, we are at a distance of lambda by 2 we are connecting. So, that means input impedance is equal to the Zl means the load impedance will meet itself again and again. One, another case you can also consider L is equal to lambda by 4. So, this will be known as a quarter wave transformer condition and in that case Zn is equal to under root of Z0 into Zl. So, these are the few special cases for the transmission line. So, the important topics uh, or important content regarding to the topic which I have selected transmission line I have now covered. So, in this lecture you can you can consider for the introduction of transmission line and their solution for the analysis part means we are value of Vz, Iz, reflection coefficient, Vswr, input, input impedance, input impedance as well as we have discussed the four different cases. Thank you.